G'day and welcome to my video about water, water for brewing. Beer is about 95% water, so it's a very large and very important part of the beer. It can affect everything from mouthfeel to taste, uh, to your mash, to your efficiency, uh, the whole process really. So we'll start with extract brewing, especially if you're brewing with pre-made tins like this, pre-hop tins, pre-made tins. All the salts for the mash, of course, have already been done in here, and most of the salts you'll ever need for the brew, unless you're modifying it, will already be in this tin. So again, the main thing you're going to be adding to that is water. The one thing you do have to worry about with water for extract brewing is the chlorine or chloramine uh, that could be present in your tap water. One of the easiest methods to treat your water for chlorine and chloramines is simply Camden tablets. This cost under $10 delivered to my house and there's 50 tablets in there. You should be able to get just about 50 batches done out of that depending on the size of your batch. So what your methods might be is you might fill your bottling bucket or a, a big stainless steel pot that might fit you 20 litres or five gallons of water and you just crush up one of these tablets, mix it in the best you can. You might see little white floaties in there from some of the binding agents in the actual tablets themselves. I'm assuming that's what it is. And, uh, but it's really nothing to worry about. You'll see them float around, but they'll all dissolve and go away uh, eventually. These do it instantly, instantly. By the time you mix it in, the chlorine and chloramine is gone. Personally, what I use is sodium metabisulfite. And that's mainly because I always have it in my brewery. It's a sanitizer, it's an oxygen, oxygen scavenger, and it's great for removing chlorine instantly. All you'd need to do is add about a small teaspoon of this to your 19 litres of water, mix it in well, it'll dissolve straight away and your chlorine and chloramines are gone instantly. It can really make a difference to your beers and it's worth having a go at. The way many people first get introduced to using salts uh, in brewing, it might be as simple as just adding some extra salts to the boil. I remember years ago when I went to the home brew shop and I was just asking how to make my hops shine a little bit more or my multi beers maltier, like the ones I used to buy from breweries. And the simple method was just add a teaspoon of something like calcium chloride to help with the maltiness. Or if you were doing a hoppy beer and you wanted it a bit more bitter and the hops to shine a little bit more, you might add a teaspoon of calcium sulfate. Now that worked quite well. But once you do that, you start realizing that uh, there's a lot more to brewing salts than that. And the first place you really need to start is to find out about the, your water that you're using in your brewing before adding any salts. So the best place to get information about your water is your water supplier. Now, sometimes when you ring the water suppliers, They'll just give you some generic information. You might just be speaking to customer service on the desk. If they can't help you, then you just move up a step. And usually someone you'll find someone there that'll be really, really happy to help you with it. They might just give you a link to their water reports, but they're often missing one or two of the ingredients you need to know about. Other places to go could be aquarium shops or even nurseries. Most of these places, if they're good ones, will be testing their water on a, at least a weekly basis, sometimes a daily basis. The reason nurseries or aquariums might test so much is because the salt levels fluctuate. So when you're looking at a water report, try and get the average. They'll usually show a minimum and a maximum for the salt levels and usually a mean or an average. And that's the one I use and I've never had a problem with that. I'll put some information up on the screen right now of what to ask for and that'll really help the water company, whoever you ask, give you the information you need. So with brewing, we're talking about calcium, magnesium, sodium, sulfite, chlorides, bicarbonate, and pH level. Uh, today, I'm not gonna go into full on detail about all these ingredients. One thing to remember about your water report, the alkalinity or bicarbonate levels can be measured in two different ways. So there is a simple formula to work it out if your company or water report only lists one of those ways. And I'll put that up on the screen now. If you don't get cooperation from your water supplier, uh, or you use 
river water or tank water, a good option is to send a sample off to be tested. Uh, most countries and places will have somewhere to send it. There might only be, there's only a couple of places in Australia that do it. Uh, might cost you a little bit of money, but it really is w worth knowing what your salt amounts are in your water. Once you get your numbers, there's many programs and websites that can help you work out your water adjustments for the beer you're about to brew. Let's have a quick look at the ingredients that you can use to adjust your water. You may not use all of these. You might use one or two. You may use a whole lot. Um, there might be other substitutes you can use. But these are the few basic ones that I use, and I can treat my RO water or filtered water uh, and my tap water with these same salts. We'll start with calcium chloride. It does a lot of things, but one of the main things you use it for is to help those maltier beers along. There's a few things to remember about calcium chloride. It's the main ingredient, or sometimes the only ingredient, in things like damp rid. So if you're using calcium chloride, don't leave the lid off it and put it in a watertight container because it will absorb all the water out of the air. Of course, getting heavier, you'll get less calcium chloride and your measurements will be out. One of the next most common ones is calcium sulfate. This one's more of a powder, a fine powder. And again, this is one of the first ones I use to accentuate hops in my beer. I'll also mention calcium sulfite is gypsum. Calcium carbonate or chalk is handy to have. I use this probably less than I use the others, but it still often gets used. Epsom salts, magnesium, really great for your beers. Uh, yes, if you have too much of it, it will give you the runs, but uh, I've been using a teaspoon of that in just about all my beers uh, for a long time, and that's fine. Bicarb soda usually used to adjust pH, but it is another small ingredient. I don't use this so much, but um, it's handy to have around if you do need it. I'll mention that most of these you can get at a hardware store, say your gypsum or your chalk, but it's often better to buy them from a brew store or somewhere that's selling food grade versions. You're never quite sure what you're going to get when you buy it at the hardware store. Even the Epsom salts, a lot of supermarkets sell Epsom salts, some sell ones that are food grade, like the one I showed you then, or some will sell ones that are simply for putting in your bath to relax your muscles, and often they'll have written on it, not food grade. And although all the base ingredients are the same, it's how they're handled and what might have been handled on the machinery that they were packaged in beforehand. So I wouldn't take the risk personally. So what do you do now? Well, most programs and websites, you can enter your water details, and then you can pick which water profile you might be trying to copy. You might be doing an English ale and you want Burton water profile to match the water they might use over there. So you put your numbers in, you pick the profile you want to use, and it'll give you what water adjustments to make. You might have to add so much of this salt and so much of this salt. Where the problems come along is say you wanted to match uh, a classic European lager or Pilsner and the numbers are very, very low. In our tap water, in my tap water, the salts are higher than you need. That's where you can start filtering your water and you might filter the whole batch and start from scratch or you might do a mix. There is programs, again, I'll leave links down below that can help you do this, mix your water. So you might use uh, five litres of distilled water and the rest your tap water just to get those, the levels of the salt right in the water to match the style you're going to brew. So there's a couple of ways you can adjust your water. If you have a big HLT where all your water fits in before you start brewing, you can adjust that whole amount and then you really don't have to worry. If you don't, if you're brewing in about a mash amount and then you might have a sparge amount that you have to heat up separately, then you can adjust them separately. All these pro most of the programs will show you how to do the amounts you need for each size batch. The other way I used to do it for a long time was I'd adjust the mash and then I wouldn't bother adjusting the sparge water because I had a big sparge water tank and I'd be wanting to use that for whatever was left for other things. So I'd adjust my mash and then once it was in the boil kettle, I'd add my sparge salts to the boil kettle to adjust the rest of the water. Once I got a little bit more advanced using salts, I used to use it just to adjust my mash pH. Now, where things change 
is once you're trying to copy a water uh, profile from a country or to do a certain profile for a certain beer, then you can't really use salts as much anymore in your mash to adjust your pH. Uh, that's where you move on and start using acidulated malt or lactic acid, just to name a few. Now I've mentioned pH, we better have a quick talk about that. It's very important when you're playing with your water and your salts uh, and adjusting them to know your pH. Uh, you need a pH meter. Now, I've got several here. That's the one I used for a long time. I uh, bought this uh, because it had a replaceable probe and had some good write-ups and uh, it goes down to the 0.01 of pH and it worked very well for a long time. I think it's at the end of its life now and it needs a new bulb. These cheap ones you can buy from eBay and they'll cost you maybe $5 delivered to your house. Look, they often work. Uh, they often don't last long. They're not very reliable. Um, you know, I know some people that swear by them, but I've had nothing but troubles. Um, you know, they might work okay for a month uh, and then gone. The one I've been using lately since my old trusty is getting a bit rusty is the Kegland Beverage Doctor. And it's been working fine. I found it a little bit slower than my original one. But uh, when I say that, it's like 20 seconds or something. Uh, and the number slowly comes down, but then it settles and you get a nice reading. So mash pH is important. Uh, most people will say somewhere between 5.2 and 5.4 or even 5.6 uh, for your mash pH. But I know people that brew lagers that swear by having their mash pH down to four point, high four point somethings. Uh, and people that push their stout ones up higher. It's up to you, but most people will start trying to aim for around the 5.2 to 5.4. The way you take a pH reading, you need to have the grain mixed in with your water for about 10 to 15 minutes for the pH to sort of level out a bit. It will continue to change over the whole mash and the boil and the ferment, but what we're interested in is the mash pH at the moment and uh, it'll take about 10 minutes to settle down, as I said, and that's where you take a sample. I put mine in a coffee cup. I put it in the freezer for 10 to 15 minutes to cool down to around 20 degrees. These instruments do have temperature compensation, but it's like your refrax or your hydrometer. You'll get a much more accurate reading if you're around that 20 degree mark. Now, what a lot of people do then, once they've got their reading, if they're high or low, they'll add salts or a, or a liquid version of their salts to their mash mix it in, but then you have to wait another 10 minutes and you can check your mash pH again. By the time you've done all that, the mash is over. So the ideal way to do it, if you're going to do it on the fly, is to maybe do a protein rest. So you have your grain and water, not at mash conversion temperatures, a bit lower, it might be 55 degrees Celsius. You mix it in, you take your pH there, you adjust it there till you get it right, and then you raise to mash temps. Then you'll have the perfect pH you wanted for your mash. Now that's a lot of work. Um, and a lot of people do single infusion, including me most of the time these days. The best way, in my opinion, for home brewers to adjust their pH is to use a good program like Brewfather or Beersmith or one of the online ones. You enter your water details, you enter all your salt adjustments, you enter your grain it will estimate what your pH of your mash is. You can add lactic acids into the program or your acidulated malt to try and get your pH around that 5.2 to 5.4. Once you've adjusted your water and your grain bill if you need to by adding acidulated malt or the like, you add everything into your mash tun at the right temperature, at your mash temperature. 10 minutes in, you take a reading. You record the reading, of course, and you compare it to what your program or website guessed. Hopefully it'll be very close. If it's a couple of points up or a couple of points down, you don't worry about it and you adjust that, you make that adjustment in your next recipe. It'll be fine. Do not worry if you mash in um, and, it, and it's reading a 5 pH or even 4.8 pH or if it's reading 5.8 pH up here, there's nothing to panic about. Your beer will be fine. It's a very easy and efficient way of doing it. And that's how most people I know do it.
Of course, it's totally fine if you want to do the other version where you do a protein rest, you adjust it all there and then raise it to mash temps. Your mash is usually over within 20 to 30 minutes, the majority of it. So adjusting your pH after that is a bit of a waste of time. With the haze craze lately and NIPAs, there's a lot of talk about the chloride to sulfate ratio. And it's very important. Um, and it's very important in all beers. But there's one thing to remember, it's not just the ratio, it's the amounts. We talk in parts per million when we're talking salts in beer. And if you have one part per million sulfate to two part per million chloride, it's going to be a lot different from 100 parts per million sulfate to a 200 parts per million chloride. So it's just something to remember. So you have to look at the amounts, not just the ratio. We haven't really talked about RO water or filtered water yet, or even distilled water. Uh, you can use all of those. They will need adjusting with salts. You don't want to brew a water that's totally filtered with nothing in it. You do need to add salts. And of course, the same programs you use to enter your tap water details, if you just enter zero in, or they might even have an RO water setting, and you can start from scratch and match any water profile from around the world. Some people like to use spring water, uh, most spring water you buy in supermarkets has actually been filtered. Uh, if you're using real natural spring water, you do have to be very careful. They can be high in certain salts, and that can throw out your calculations massively. Uh, if you're buying it commercially, you should be able to get a water analysis for it. If you're getting it out of the ground, uh, you might be better off getting it tested as well. And again, that can change yearly or seasonally even uh, when you're getting it out of the ground. Rainwater. Some people use rainwater and assume it's pure. Uh, well, that's not true if it's coming off your roof, especially if you've got a tiled roof, it can pick up a lot of salts from there, um, uh, from the tank, whichever tank you got it stored in. So it's worth testing that as well. So I'll briefly go over some of the ingredients again and what they do. Calcium sulfite or, or gypsum. Nice, great for crisp, bright beers. Calcium chloride for a full round, multi flavor to your beers. Epsom salts, good for all beers, but really good for dark beers. And if I didn't mention it at the start, of course, getting rid of the chlorine is just as important for all grain as it is for your extract beers. So if you haven't done it, get a water report, find out, list those ingredients you need to know, and most places will help you out without a problem. So I hope I've explained that clearly enough. I will do another video where I go through a couple of the programs and enter the water details and how you do it. But it really is an essential part of brewing. Um, once you get all your other processes down, it's really, really worth looking at your water. It will make a difference. It's made a difference to my, a huge difference to my lagers. Uh, and I've got my first um, big pale ale that I've totally adjusted from RO water coming up. I never used to worry about it because to get to pale ale uh, salt levels in with my tap water, I only had to add stuff, except for the chlorine, get rid of the chlorine but the rest was just adding things. So I never really bothered. Uh, it's only just recently when I've got the RO filter, uh, I've been able to do my lagers like a classic lager. And uh, now my first pale ale, will be very interesting to see how it turns out. So thanks very much for watching. Again, thanks to my patrons, my subscribers, press that like, do the share thing, and I'll talk to you soon.